Hi, welcome to the session. Today we're going to look at Lean On by Major Laser featuring Moo and how to recreate that in Logic Pro X. I really love Lean On's melody and style because it incorporates a little bit of Indian Eastern elements about it. Let's have a look. So this is a track for Lean On and um, it's at 98 BPM. This is the vocal isolated track and um, the rest are MIDI and this is a audio loop that I'll talk about later. Let's have a listen. And let's go to where the drums come in. And let's go to the chorus. So the first track that we have is this chordal type pattern and uh, I'm going to take the plugins off except for the instrument plugin and this is a sculpture plugin where you can find under sculpture and I picked a preset under plucked instruments called Namaste which I felt in name was already very suitable and in tone was very suitable for the song. So here's how it sounds in solo. So it's already got that kind of texture about it that suits uh, the kind of track that we have. Now, what uh, I added was that there was a channel EQ and a space designer. And under space designer, I picked a medium space hall 2.5. Oh, seconds medium hall, which kind of suited to it, and here's how it sounds. Just like that. So it's more muted, but uh, one thing you can note is look at the EQ. It's actually automated. So if I open up automation, um, here, you can actually see the EQ under channel EQ, high shelf gain, you can see that it gets automated like this. And it remains for the rest of the song. So the starting is more muffled and we sort of bring that in. And that's it for the EQ for this. Now let's go to the next track. And the next track is also a sculpture track. Not the same one, under plucked instruments as well because all of the tones have that plucky type sound. Under Telecaster. And in this case, let's take out the EQs and everything. Here's how it sounds just by itself. Pretty straightforward, plucky type sound. And uh, for the EQ, also a high shelf, uh, like minus 13 of dB of 900, it's quite a lot off the top. So it sounds more muffled now. And also a space designer. And this one's also a medium haul. 2.0 seconds. I didn't use a send because I wanted an insert for both so I can control the reverb a bit more. And here's how it sounds. So very hall type of sound and when you put them together So that's pretty cool, they work quite well together as a single uh, unit, as the bass and the top um, sort of rhythmic line. And it gets repeated over here, over here, and basically just repeats throughout the whole song. 
Now let's go to the second section when uh, the bass and kicks start coming in. Now the bass is a really straightforward one. And under Alchemy, I picked a bass, deep sub bass. You can actually find it under here as well, deep sub bass. I left it as sign and you get this really like subby type basic sign bass like this. A slightly buzzy kind of sub bass, which works pretty well for this. And for the kicks, I went for an EXS24 kick under single drums, kicks, electronic kits, um, C110. And here's how it sounds. Pretty much fine undoctored. You can muck around with a bit of compression and EQ if you want. Um, I left it as it is pretty straightforward. I think it works okay. So it goes together with everything. It sounds like this. And this part is pretty much the same, except there's a snare that comes in. And this is under single drum snares, electronic snares, D1. 14 and here's how it sounds So with everything else it sounds like this uh, You can see that initially I put the channel EQ on I didn't quite like the sound So I left it without the EQ on you can turn it on and muck around with it and see if you come up with other tones that you like and once it hits spot it just cuts off and let's go to the chorus this whole section here is pretty much the same so it's pretty much the same as a copy over in fact it's identical copy over from the verse Except now you have more layers, and one of the layers is this loop here, which you can find under a uh, cache register topper. Cache register topper. Not the exact sound, but I thought it worked pretty well. It's got the ethnic feel a little bit with that sort of loose, splashy stuff. So I dragged it in to an audio track, and I just looped, copied it over, and here's how it sounds. So with the original bits, here's how it sounds. Yeah, it kind of works. And let's move on to more bits. And these are more like ethnic little bits here. So let's have a listen to this. So this one is called Funky Strut Shaker 02. It's also an Apple loop. So you go shaker and you just muck around, look around and see what you got. And I found one called Funky Strut Shaker 02. And this is a MIDI track. You can see from green ones as opposed to the blue ones that are audio. And you just drag it into a MIDI track. It loads all the instruments. And um, yeah, this is the pattern. So you can see it start building up into the, the sort of like high-end shakery type stuff that gives it the identity. And I picked up another percussion here as well, and it's a jacaranda percussion. And that one has a bit more like a sort of Eastern feel. Yeah. So when you put them all together, they have this nice ethnic type sound. And with the original bits from the verse. So that's pretty cool. It works out quite well as a sort of like top rhythmic line. Now, before we go on to the famous sort of vocal line, I just want to go to the other kick that I added, which is under single drums kicks, layer kicks. And layer kicks are great because you can 
they're meant to be layered. So this is a body kick because I wanted even more body from it. And it sounds like this, body kick C12. Pair it with the original kick. So it gets a bit bigger and that's one way to do it. You, know, you can have a completely new kick. You can um, put layer different kicks together and uh, just make sure that they're not flaming. But I think it sounds pretty okay with everything else. Now, the vocal line, which sounds like this. And this is actually from the original sample. So uh, it's just the notes. It's playing MIDI. And I want to show you how to build uh, an instrument from EXS from scratch. So what you do is you load an EXS24 sampler and you have an empty one, right? You open it up. And um, you go under edit and you get this new window where it's all the samples and on your keyboard and right now nothing is loaded. So what you do is you go to edit, uh, sorry, you go to zone and you go to load multiple samples. So you can load multiple samples. In this case of this song, you only load one. And this example I'm gonna show you is not that vocal line, it's also just one. So it's just this sound and you go play. Okay, it sounds like that. Just a beep. That's all right. So I'm going to add and I'm going to go done. And what's going to pop up is that adding one sample, please choose how to build the map. And if you want EXS24 to be smart about it and just make sort of like different notes from that singular one, you can go auto map by reading the root key from audio file. So if you've got drums, you load it this way and you've got other ways to load in contiguous zones as well. I'm just going to auto map and you can see that this sample, this one sample has been stretched across all the different notes. So now when I play the notes, they're in key, they're already tuned and it's really easy to play it as a song. And then you can go instrument and you can go save as and then you save the instrument to whatever you want. That's not what we're doing right now with this, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So you can go save the instrument. I'm just going to go don't save. And we have this vocal line, which is built from the sample, from the original sample of the song. That's why it sounds so accurate. Uh, and it's just one single sample as well, which is stretched across the EXS24. And we have a space design on top of it. And this one's much bigger, so it's a large space 2.7 seconds big chamber, and you can hear it in the sound. Yeah, and you know, like you can tweak around with uh, the sort of EXS24 settings so that um, they sound more like the the track itself. You can muck around with either. You can say, oh, I want it to be legato, I want it to be poly, um, I want the pitch band, all the different things. So play around with it, understand EXS24 and how it samples because it's really, really powerful. And here's how it sounds, the whole chorus. And you just repeat it all through and that's about it for this track. I hope you learned something useful today, like how to use EXS24 to create new instruments for yourself. It opens up a whole possibility of sampling and really fun stuff. So if you like the project, you can download it at the link below and please subscribe for more. See ya.